phosphorus trifluoride has the chemical formula PF3. To create the Lewis dot structure for this compound, you notice that each fluorine contributes seven valence electrons times three atoms gives us 21 electrons. Plus, we need five additional electrons from phosphorus. So, therefore, we need a total of 26 electrons for this particular species. Now, we see so far that allocating the uh, electrons around the fluorines that we have eight, eight, and eight. So that's 24. We need two additional electrons, make 26, and those are in a lone pair on the phosphorus. Now, we notice here that phosphorus being in the third row can expand its octet. Those are these open uh, white boxes that have holes in it. And we also have the gray area. So we filled up all the grays, which shows that we've satisfied the octet rule. But since we have not put any electrons into the white regions, that tells us that we have not expanded the octet for this particular compound. Phosphorus pentafluoride has the chemical formula PF5. For the five fluorine atoms, we need seven times five equals 35 electrons. The phosphorus atom contributes five, so that gives us a total of 40 electrons that we have to allocate for this particular molecule. So the way that we do it is we need eight electrons around each fluorine. We need to satisfy the octet rule. Uh, in the process, we need at least two electrons, one bond between each fluorine and the phosphorus atom. We left out one electron here. Right there. So in the process around the fluorine, we have two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. And since fluorine phosphorus is in the third row, we are allowed to expand the octet. So here is one of the compounds where phosphorus needs to expand the octet to form the particular compound. In PF3, it did not need to expand the octet, but going to PF5, it did. One of the most important compounds containing phosphorus is phosphoric acid, which has the chemical formula H3PO4. To design the Lewis structure for this particular compound, we note that there are four oxygen atoms, each of which contributes six valence electrons. So that gives 24 electrons. The phosphorus contributes five electrons, that gets us up to 29. There are three hydrogens, each of which contributes one electron for a grand total of 32 electrons. One of the key features of this molecule that's a little different than other examples we've looked at is that while we have single bonds between three of the oxygen atoms and phosphorus, and those happen to be the oxygen atoms which are also connected to the hydrogens, these are the acidic hydrogens of the acid. One of the oxygens is connected by a double bond to the central phosphorus atom. As a result, the phosphorus atom in the center has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons, three uh, sets from three single bonds, and then one set from a double bond. So that gives us a total of ten electrons around phosphorus, which is allowed because we have and phosphorus is in the third row, so therefore we can expand the octet. If phosphoric acid, a weak acid, ionizes once, it will lose H+. So the hydrogen will leave, but its electrons will remain behind. And we are left with the dihydrogen phosphate ion. H2PO4 minus 1. So dihydrogen phosphate is the conjugate base of phosphoric acid. It turns out that dihydrogen phosphate ion also has 
acidic properties. And it can ionize and give up H plus as well. If it does, the hydrogen leaves while its two electrons remain, and we are left with the hydrogen phosphate ion, which has the chemical formula HPO4 2 minus. So we see that the conjugate base of dihydrogen phosphate is hydrogen phosphate. Even hydrogen phosphate has weakly acidic properties, so it can ionize one step further and we lose H plus. It leaves behind its electrons and we are left with the phosphate ion. This has a chemical formula PO4 3 minus. Therefore, phosphate is the conjugate base of hydrogen phosphate ion. Phosphate in all its forms is incredibly important in biological systems as a means of transferring energy from one chemical to another.